All right. So, Godsmack, When Legends Rise. This yeah. came out on uh, April 27th. 27th. Yes. Which, and uh, it's, I don't even remember the last time I listened to a Godsmack album. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, their last one came out four years ago. Yeah. Um, I believe. Was that 1,000 horsepower? 2016th. Uh, 27th. What? <laughs> 20... 14? 14. You can math. what I meant to say. Um, and personally, I was looking forward to this album a lot. <laughs> oh, was. Keyword being was. Okay. Um, just because I really like God's Mac. So um, I'm going to reveal to you a fact that uh, you, is going to make you go, oh. So this was produced by famous producer Eric Ron. I don't know mean anything to you, but he's produced Panic at the Disco, New Year's Day... Who you'll recall we did the EP of recently, Motionless and White, and perhaps most importantly, Attila. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so interesting choice on producers here. He was they were deliberately trying to change their sound on this album. Uh, Sully, what's his name right? Sully. Ryan. Sully was trying to change. He said that uh, he was upset that they were lumped with heavy metal all the time. Which, as what? I recall, is something we all like very much about Godsmack. Wait, what else <laughs> did he want them to be? He wanted them to be more hard rock. Um, okay. So, so um. he went to Eric Ron, like I said, who's Panic at the Disco, New Year's Day, Motionless and White, and Attila, um, and uh, said, "Hey, let's." Then they worked on, um, I believe, Bulletproof and When Legends Rise first. They just just sample it out, and they loved it so much that they produced the rest of the album with him. All right. All right, so then you, you do you, Sully. <laughs> so, so let's get started right with the first one, which, which is the title track, "When Legends Rise." When Legends Rise was the song a legend? It was okay at best. Um, I mean, it, this was, so this was the second single, and the interesting fact about this song is it's the second single. It's the title track. It's the shortest song on the album at two minutes and 52 seconds. Mm -hmm. And it was written with uh, John Feldman, who's uh, the lead singer of Goldfinger. You may recognize them. Uh, you, you probably don't know them, but they were, uh, they they did that the, the sort of punky sky cover of 99 Red Balloons. Huh. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people know him from. And this was just written with him. Uh, he's, mm -hmm. he's, I believe, credited as composer. But this song has a really, like... Yeah, there's some like when it, when it yeah the intro I liked and I'm like oh yeah that's a Godsmack thing to do like they love Tom heavy in, like intros and bridges and stuff like that and that's like a characteristic thing of theirs and so I'm like all right this, this is gonna be okay and like up until the vocal started I'm like pretty into it and then like just oh it really frustrates me how the vocals are mixed in this whole album because the, like. Sully Arn has got, like, a really deep, like, like, full voice. Mm -hmm. And they just mix the bass right out of it in this album. It pisses me off so much. Like, they're making, trying to make him sound like a teenager when he's, like, a uh, full-grown man who's always had a deep, bassy voice. And that's, like, what I at least, like, love. One of the things I love about their sound well, as a band. Thinking but. of, like, Panic! at this go Motionless and White, and then a lot of, like, a lot of the stuff on this album reminded me vocally and occasionally rhythmically of, like, Avenged Sevenfold and stuff. A lot of that has that very high-pitched vocal mixing. Which is awful. But, uh, yes. Um, so this, 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 the drummer, I feel, for a great deal of this album is very much taking a nap. <laughs> this very much has that Lars beat, and the chorus is that is just regular. And the, almost all the choruses on this album are just basic chord progression choruses that he yeah. sings really a simple melodic melody over. Melodic, melodic melody. melody. Yeah, a, a simp, like simply, it doesn't change very much. It doesn't do a lot of scale work. Most of them don't. It's my thing. And this one, I just, I wasn't really into this. It's, it's... Yeah, my reaction it, to the, upon hearing the chorus for the first time was, what is this poppy bullshit? Yeah. Um... <laughs> That and was then your reaction uh, continues to be that. Upon the second listen, I liked it more. Um, but I think that's just throughout the rest of the album, my, my expectations had been adjusted. Um, <laughs> okay, well, moving on. Probably through the bridge, he starts this weird monologue that you can't hear. Yeah. Which ends with like, and then you'll have blood on you or something. I'm like, man, I wish I knew why. Yeah. But it's just, but, it's just well, a the, weird... And one positive about the song, though, is in that little whispery section, the drums are actually kind of cool. Yeah, it, it's... Um, it goes it, back to that Tom Heavy, like... Yeah, in the, that bridge section there, it slows it down, brings out mm -hmm. uh, almost like a groovy, sort of just a very yeah. tempered sort of thing. But the problem is he's going, whoa, excuse me, like, whoa, whoa, whoa legends rise, yeah. whoa. 
that was totally the wrong melody, but yeah. it's just this really simple sort of, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, come on, you could do way better than that. But, oh, and I know one thing that ticked you off here in this song, and ticked you off through so many of the songs in here, and that's just before the final chorus, they did that high pass filter. <laughs> yeah, James Rice. Yeah, so generic, so like overdone unnecessary especially with these sort of like new metal-y core kind of guys like the emo-y sort of panic of disco new yeah. year's day attila kind of guys it's it's just a way they introduce a lot of their final choruses and stuff sure and uh this uh, this song ends with just a i mean that's not a bad ending i like i like you know when a song ends concisely I, I, well yeah but it's just funny because the whole rest of the song is very much taking a, a lars beat bat that sort of like boom and then it just goes, done. I, I, I didn't take issue with that version like that. It just came out of nowhere is my thing. The next song is Bulletproof. Bulletproof. Did you want to shoot this song? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I could. It wouldn't matter because it's Bulletproof. <laughs> so this was the first single off of the album. And this is the Which first is... new Godsmack song I heard. And I had to ask myself when I heard it, is this Godsmack? Because <laughs> I'm used to, you know, like, ah, oh, I stand alone and yeah. awake and things like that. And I'm just like, oh, this is so totally different. Yeah, it definitely feels like this song was written for a different band. Like, because in itself, it's not a bad song. In fact, it's kind of catchy. Like, but it's just not, like, as heavy as I'm used to or as aggressive or, like, as... It, because this, the way this chorus went, it reminded me of, and speaking of, like, that sort of new metal-y sort of... 2000s medley it reminded me of the skillet song which was like that came out and then their last album which came out a few months ago which was earthquake tidal wave just oh, like yeah. a hurricane you make me brave yeah. for my titanium 100 percent what i felt the whole yeah. time because i'm bulletproof yeah bulletproof he's like this is weirdly poppy yeah. and there's lots of layering and harmonies on it and you're like this doesn't feel yeah and i understand he's trying to go in a different direction and i get that it just it's really weird for me so this, so something we skipped. It's just I wanted to talk about that that um, that skillet song. So so much <laughs> just got in my brain. This song starts off with, and a lot of these songs start off with. Every time we hear the intro, we're like, "Isn't that Lincoln Park? Isn't that something from yeah, Lincoln Park?" Yeah, it starts off with some like just sort of sounds. And I every think. time you hear them, you'll be like, "Oh, I'm hearing a Lincoln Park song because it sounds." It, they're using all this sort of like whispery ding ding sort of tones. Ding, doo, doo, yeah, exactly. Doo, 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 you'll hear, it'll play for a second and you'll be like, oh, that's this song and then it'll yeah. become the Godsmack song. And it's kind of odd. Yeah. Yeah. So this one starts with like a, like a really far away and it feedbacks in and it's really interesting. Yeah. And then and the... And then the... Oh, sorry. Uh, the verse is really like musically there's nothing going on but like it's got a cool vocal melody. See, that's the thing I like about the verse is that it kind yeah. of steps back for the vocals to take over. Yeah, which I, yeah, I wasn't saying was a bad thing. Um, Like... And it leaves room, if they wanted to, to, like, in the next verse, step up and, like, have some, like, chugs or whatever. Which they did um, not do. It's just got... Yeah, they didn't do that, but they could have. It's very... They wanted sim- to make it more interesting. Um, well, to, to go back to sort of the Linkin Parky thing again, this has a very sort of... Bass underneath the vocal. Like, when he's, like, doing a lot of his, like, vocal movement, there's just sort of... And occasionally a... And very simple drums. And the verse, like I said, it's it's very vocal fronted, and I would say the chorus is too, because it's just musically. I would say on this album until later, and there's an interesting reason why. There's not a lot going on with the guitars; they're not doing really anything well, particularly and interesting. Like that's kind of a thing that they've always done is be very vocally focused. Like just because he's got such a great, unique voice, mm-hmm. and like they've always been kind of chuggy, and like you know, you know, when you think of bands with unique riffs you don't think of Godsmack first you know I like guess, but, but <laughs> I wish there was more than just like the sort of like just strum on the uh, strum on the chord for a lot of these choruses and stuff oh yeah the choruses have no ri- like there's not riffs in the choruses yeah um, that's that's one of my problems not but this song is just it's all about that because I'm bulletproof and then of course this also does the high pass filter before the final chorus thing it's got like a solo I guess where it goes like be do dee boo yeah, it's not really a solo. I feel like it's it just repeats the same two like sections. Yeah, it's it's I, just I really a call, really. I call it an interlude more than a solo. Yeah, it's like a simple lead, I guess. is yeah, what it is. it's kind of boring and if, unnecessary. Yeah, it just feels like it's taking up space when there are solos later on the album that are yeah. significantly better than this. Yeah, like um, at first I'm just like, oh, there's not going to be any solos on this album, is there? But then, yeah, later there was, and I'm like, oh, yeah, there could have been a solo there, but there wasn't. 
Yeah, in the end, it's kind of uh, not quite unforgettable. Unforgettable. Did you find the song forgettable? Uh, listen to it several times, and uh, I, I you'll remember through the rest of this album because a lot of these songs at least like have either the same sort of rhythmic patterns or are in the same key or something. But I would always put the line from this unforgettable into each of like the following songs after this because it was just well, in and, my head. And we realized that that same melody appears in a lot of other songs. Like you're not that innocent. <laughs> yeah, that was just what we were thinking while I was playing. So this song intro once again, you'll think Lincoln Park. At least we did. Yeah, I wrote discount Lincoln Park with millennial woes yeah oh yes is the intro and verse so this song does an interesting thing that isn't really on the rest of the album that i liked a lot and the verse guitar has a very unique tone it's this sort of like fuzzy why no it's some they're they're getting some cool guitar noises there yeah it's this really sort of you know it's something like tom morello would do except not nearly as good yeah it's just some some interesting use of effects though Yes, and it really makes it, it really gives it a more riffy feel instead of just being like chordal yeah. or note. It's yeah, just I, I was definitely like happy to hear something other than shrugs. Yes, um, and it's just and it's going under his, his his vocals, which he's just sort of talking. So yes, that guitar riff, which I think is great. I think it just it, it adds so much flavor to this song, which is otherwise bland as fuck. It's this song has a lot of just weird ideas in it because then it goes into this sort of bluesy, jazzy sort of pre-chorus where it's like. Where it gets this sort of like bend in it, sure. Which goes I, that did, like that just didn't register in my brain, I guess. Yeah, but. it's 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 a little odd, and I only notice each time because it seems so strange. Because this song is made of really strange parts, uh, like that weird fuzzy Y guitar riff, and then that sort of jazzy pre-chorus, and then the chorus, which is a call and response. So fucking boring with millennial <laughs> woes and just whoa. whoa yeah, because you're un- untouchable, unforgettable, and then between each one of those words, there's woes. Is woes, but they're done by a children's choir. <laughs> Which, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to repeat what you wrote down. It was not <laughs> very nice to children. <laughs> um, I, I hate children's choirs. It, let it be known. I was in a children's choir for like six years, but I hate them. Um, they yeah. are almost 99% of the time unnecessary. Well, yeah, and they don't appear again on the album, and it's just kind of weird. And I feel like at one point they do the high pass filter style thing, but it's just the children's choir singing by themselves, yeah. and then it goes into the chorus. And it's a why? Why? <laughs> Uh, because he, because Sully liked the sound of it. And that's... just, I don't agree. (laughs) There's a lot in this album where it's like, I don't think that was a great decision personally, but he wants to go for a different sound. Like, literally he's trying to go for, what if Godsmack had a different sound? And I think if you want to do that, maybe start a different band. Don't just, oh, we're the same band, this is just our whole new sound. It was like Wake Up Call by Theory of a Dead Man, which... I know upset some people. Yeah. Or like, speaking of Lincoln Park, is like Link- when Lincoln Park went in their new direction, That's which wasn't bad per se. It was just different. It was just different. Um, yeah. Whereas I would say for them, there a lot of the fans like that. This is this is more, in my opinion, a misstep. Yeah. But so so the bridge in this is the sort of and there's a very that it could, you really get. This is the one thing I really liked about this. You get much more of that sort of syrupy whoa, Phrygian dominant y god vocal tone here yeah. in this bridge. This bridge is it, this bridge is one of the most, in my opinion, god moments. Yeah, I like the... the I, a lot of the bridges on these songs were really boring to me, but, like, this one was all right. It's, yeah. Well, there's not, it's not complicated. It's just, oh, that's the sort of, like, the bongos hitting yeah. weird sort of... You know, serenity vocal yeah. that we're that, that I was thinking of when I thought of Godsmack. Yeah, just with the children's choir, I can't, I can't with the song. Well, you know, every part of the song can be great, but you know what it is? Every part of me. Every part of me. Did you like every part of this song? Uh, not every part, but there were parts that spoke to me in it. Yeah. So it starts off with this sort of. <laughs> It's just very, very new metal. I yes, felt like it's extremely new metal. Um, because it's yeah, it's this high pitch, and then like I'm like, where? When did corn get here? Um, yeah. uh, and so it's interesting. So so it, it starts the intro that way, and then it kind of carries that as a theme into the verse, where it's just sort yeah. of jur, 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 yeah, it's the same jur, rhythm, jur, but just jur, like lower and muted. Yeah, and it's it's um, it's very, you know, straightforward, so that classic hard rock metal, hit on the root note, mm-hmm. and then go jur, 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 or whatever you do. It's yeah. very straightforward, it's very 
It's it's just hard rock straight up. Yeah. It's not it's not as long as metal and rock have existed, there's been ch- chugging and muting on the root note. <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 um, it's it's not it, you, this won't blow your mind, but it yeah. it, it works. Yeah, it, it's this passable. This I I wrote as a note inoffensive. Yeah, this song it just <laughs> functions well in my opinion because it's got that sort of new metal-y feel, yeah. but with more modern production. It's like new metal elevator music. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, <laughs> someone's got claws out today, I guess. I just. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the chorus of this with these big sort of indistinct chord progression. Yeah. Because, well, I was gonna say my other, my other problem with this song is that the verse, uh, vocals and the chorus vocals take up the same like are in the same range. It's not like you know in a lot of songs the vor- verse is a little lower and then you jump up higher pitch for the chorus or vice versa. Kind of weird, but um, this is just like gonna stay in the same middle range the whole time. So like I kind of almost like let the transition from verse to chorus like pass me by because it just vocally was kind of the same. Yeah, I, I really don't. I see I didn't even take any notes on the pre-chorus or post-chorus here because it's just like, actually, no, I took a note on the post-chorus because that intro riff again, that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but That's there's these, there was one thing I really loved vocally in the chorus. Um, where it's like, well, I can hardly breathe because I've been frozen. Da, 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 da. I really like that, that frozen. It's just a really in- cool interval that I thought mixed it up. It made it more interesting. It's one of the more interesting choruses, in my opinion. Even though it's not an interesting chorus, it's yeah, more I, interesting because of that. I guess. I don't know. I didn't. Nothing particularly struck me in this chorus. Well, I liked it. Okay. Either way, so the intro of the, 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 the returns after the chorus, mm-hmm. and it's just as new metal as you remember from the first half. And. Yep. So the bridge has this sort of building chugs going on, mm-hmm. and then it gets this solo lead that is like it sounds like like a, a storm alarm or something. It's yeah. Just, yeah, it's kind of and it's kind of like off in the distance, like echoey. Yeah, I felt like it needed to be boosted more well, if it was actually going to commit to being a solo. That's what I'm saying. It sounded like a, like an air raid siren or something so far in the distance. It's just like yeah. And so they returned to the chorus and they kept that sort of. Mm-hmm going on with it mm-hmm. so it's kind of gets it, it, it builds up back to that chorus yeah. again but it's just yeah, it just it, the song doesn't have much to it it's just it's, it's just a hundred percent it just exists yep so let's move on to the next <laughs> okay let's i guess let's take it to the edge <laughs> take it to the edge did this song push you over the edge uh it pushed me as close as i'm comfortable to new metal <laughs> um, so this is just, uh, uh, it starts off with these, these really heavy chugs yeah. and it's, yeah, it's I wrote acceptable chugs, acceptable chugs. No, I actually quite liked it. It starts off like yeah. nice and heavy and like a lot of these songs that start off with weird fuzz or whatever. You're like, yeah, yeah. we're eating. The way this one just came in with some chugs. Yeah. It's like, all right, this is straightforward. It's like, this look, this is what I'm expecting. Yeah, we're new metal. Uh-huh. And then the verse is the most new metal early 2000s thing ever. It's, uh, it's just like. I'm like, wow, I feel like I've just transported back. I can hear like all the new metal, you know, I can, it's just ridiculous. And it's the the vocals at least make it more interesting. And I like, that's a theme on the verses of this album. I think is that you've got kind of a boring riff and then, but then you've got some interesting vocals on top of it. And, um, well, I would say the, although the lyrics were really generic, but uh, I don't even remember. I, in fact, I, I wrote down that the, they use the phrase one step closer to the edge and I, my brain is, and I'm about, about to break. break as if, if we need to reference Linkin Park even more. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they keep coming up in this discussion, but um, it's almost like they were new metal. Whoa, crazy. Um, so the pre-chorus brings it down. Unfortunately, it has this sort of digital sort of like digital drum thing for like a second. See, I kind of like that because it was like a breathe before the chorus. I guess. I, I found that it was weird that it was digital when, which yeah. so far. When the drummer could have just like done a like, a, you know, hi hat or like rim of the snare thing. Yeah, where, especially because the rest of this is so heavy and guitar yeah. it's like, oh, why'd we go back to digital? And then, Don't know. then the chorus comes in and it's this really cool, like, yeah, inner valley like thing. Yeah, it's actually a pretty cool chorus. Um, I'll take it to the edge. But it's actually like a chorus that I remember. Most of the melody of, as opposed to just being really Take milk to toast the and boring. Side. And, and the funny part is the, the chorus starts off with basically the verse, but like faster. Instead of going, it goes, 
Yeah. And then it goes into these the, 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 the sort of chordal, sort of traditional sort of chords thing for the, for the last half of the chorus. But like that that sort of, hey, yeah, take it to the other side. That's mm-hmm. very, this is one of the catchiest choruses. Yeah, I on, agree. In it's definitely, the whole album. definitely, yeah, not the worst chorus. Um, the, except <laughs> what is bad, though, is the bridge. Yeah, it's weird. It's just so boring. It's so, it's got this, it's, well, it, it tries to be interesting at one point, because it's this very melodic sort of, he says like, yeah, all right, and stuff like that. <laughs> it, it's a lot, of, it feels very, it feels kind of improv and so when he goes to like, he goes to like either different scale notes or different m- mode or something during this section, because it sound it doesn't sound out of key, it just sounds super... Like, you're brought out of the, I would say, of the melody of the rest of the song mm-hmm. for a second when he sings this bridge. Well, I think it's because there's, like, in a lot of Godsmack songs, they use interesting scales. Like, <laughs> well, it, it's, yeah, more, as opposed to, like, what we've seen on this album so far, where it's just very, like, straightforward and what you expect to hear and not, like, getting a lot of the half steps in there, you know? So I think maybe, like... He's sort of reverting back to like what they know, well, and then like, it sounds weird in the context of this new album. Well, like I said, because of all the yeahs and whatnot, mm-hmm. th- this section feels like they improved it and loved it, and that's what. And then they're they're and kept it, mm-hmm. and so I would say it's it's really weird and out of place for me. But for if they liked it, well then shoot, what do we? What do we mean? Yeah. We're just, we're sitting here reviewing, you know. Yeah, I think um, this song was still pretty good overall. Yeah, and at the end there's some some shouting call and response just for a second. Just like one chorus has a little shouting call and response and then yeah. it never appears again and it's done. I think that was they're like, how do we like rev up the last chorus? I don't know, let's add some group shouting or whatever. I mean, hey, as thrash fans, we can't deny <laughs> group shouting true. is that great. It's true. It's inside us. You might even say it's under our scars. Under your scars. Did this song leave a scar? Uh, a beautiful one. This song. Oh, it spoke to my soul. Shush. This song is beautiful, eloquent, and just it's it'll it'll speak to to the romantic inside all of us. It's the best ballad ever. No. no. Okay, so under your scars. If by best you mean most generic and most not <laughs> this needing is the, a place on a Godsmack album. This Jesus is the Christ. weirdest, most out of place thing. Like so, the piano started. I'm like, the fuck is this? No, this and, the only ballad weirder than this is the one on Arch Enemy's album. Ah, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's the only most out of place ballad ever. <laughs> that yeah, that was. I don't know if that was more out of place than this one. In, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, anyway, this, like, at least There's that one was... a reason at, to at, believe. At least that song was interesting. <laughs> Whereas this is just kind of like, if you told a computer to generate a ballad... <laughs> it's so great. It's just a piano chord progression with, like, some string throwing... Chin, mm-hmm. yeah. chin, 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 chin. Yeah. It, it's like, if you told a computer to write a ballad, like, it's really... I, I, I would remember thinking, I'm like, did they even, like, write this? Like, it, what? It feels so strange. Like I said, it's it's exactly the same thing as when you've listened to, like I said, The Theory of a Dead Man, and then you listen to Rx. You're like, where did this come from? And you're like, oh, did Sully get a... It's just like the story for Rx. <laughs> did he get a piano, a piano, and he had to write a song on it? I guess. I don't know, man. And I'd, I'd really like, like to know if there was... If these are synth strings or real strings. I couldn't... I don't know. Yeah. but Because I, I, guess... I don't have quite the ear for that, but... Uh, if they are real strings, I would love to know who played them on this, because yeah, that, that would be, be so great. Yeah, really, the only, like, redeeming factor on this song is the guitar solo. Like, it's a pretty nice guitar solo. This guitar solo, yeah, it's bluesy, it's a slow, jammy thing, yeah. and it's, it's... Like, also, it's, like, the first real guitar solo yeah, of the album. Really... And I'm like, oh, yay, they're actually going to have solos, I guess. And it's soulful, it's powerful. Yeah, I it's think nice. it's powerful. It's nice. Yeah. It's the best part of the song. So the problem is, because the guitar solo is so good... It makes me ironically love this song, and that's one of the most unfortunate places as a reviewer to be because you want to rate a song based on how it like, fits the album and everything. Yeah. But when I hear this solo and this song, I'm just like, yes, See, I'm filled with joy because it's funny. See, I'm I'm not so easily wooed by slow jam solos. <sighs> well, you don't have a solo. <laughs> um, neither does this album. No. So. Whoa, wrecked. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. and I just feel like the last chorus after the solo didn't really like up the power in any way like it was just a third repeat of the chorus like it wasn't anymore uh, i'm sorry but i have to interrupt you and say how can you not feel it deep down in your soul with lines like would you still be you 
if we weren't we. <laughs> oh, this is... Jesus Christ. I, I love this, ironically, as being a, the most aggressive generic ballad, and that makes me love it, because it's just like, yeah, everyone experiences that emotion. <laughs> the ballad emotion. Everyone experiences that. And so, so I, I like it, but it is 0% Godsmack. I can't, I don't understand it at all. It, it was just, it just came out, it came out of nowhere. Uh, and we can all hope to understand it someday. Someday. Did you like it? Um, uh, well, so Someday is the longest song on the album. It shouldn't be. That pretty much sums up my opinion. It's like, it's not bad. It's four minutes and 44 seconds. Weird four repetition there. Yeah. Um, but the problem is the intro and the verse riff are just two notes. Yeah. At least like the vocal sounds very forward and crisp on top of that. I guess, but it's just boring is the problem. Yes, I it's, agree. It's, uh, even if they added a third note to their chord progression, it'd be better. And I know, I know they're going for a specific sort of like tense back and forth sort of sound. Yeah. But especially with the 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 chorus after we're just being this chordal big open. Yeah. But at least thing. like going from that like two note thing to the chorus, like at least it builds up as opposed to a lot of these songs which have like interesting verses and then the chorus is really boring and bland and you're like oh. Like, I thought that was going to go somewhere, but it didn't. Whereas this one at least, like, goes somewhere. Well, yeah, it's really interesting, because the, the verse is that... And then the, it gets this pre is like... It's this really stop-starty, jumpy mm-hmm. back-and-forth sort of, like, climby biz. And it's really interesting. And I, when I heard it, the first time I was like, oh, this chorus is going to be good. This chorus is going to be moving, and it's going to be, jank, jank, you know, it rock and rolling. Tight. And it's just, it's guitar recording, and there is a lead underneath. The problem is, because the vocals are sitting so crisply on top of the mm-hmm. whole song, and this is how it is the whole album, is... That lead that's going underneath it is really kind of lost, in my mm. opinion, because it's just it's 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 also do, it's doing a melody and he's doing a melody, yeah. so it's it's really hard to capture both. So your mind's gonna latch onto the words because yeah. that's what it is. Well, and they've always been a very vocal focused band. Just that's because that's one of their strengths. Oh, so. which is why it's a shame that they had this lead going on. I'd love to hear the lead because the the focus is always the voice. So mm. let's let's give the the lead some room to breathe. And then the song descends into the Inter Sandman drums. See, yeah, I, I wrote that that uh, bridge section was a tease with all the toms because it was a very simple like tom groove, and I'm like, I know you can do better than that. I know you can do better than that. <laughs> yeah, and then over it, there's this really sort of reverby delay with like high pass filter on the on the delay, and this this call and response with himself, and it's all in all the drums are like. You're like, oh, this is this are like is good, building up to something, to something good, and it's just and it's like, not. it's not, and the bridge is kind of boring, and the vocals are kind of boring, and then at the end, it returns to the two note sort mm-hmm. of thing to to end the song, and I'm just like, this song is, you know, nearly five minutes long, and it had some of the fewest notes of any song yeah. on the uh, on the album, and therefore, it just someday, just it wasn't good, it wasn't very good in my opinion. I didn't yeah, like it very it was much. Just like eight. Yeah, but I mean, at least I only had to listen to it just one time. Just one time. Did you only want to listen to it one time? Uh, no. I listened to this multiple times, and I enjoyed listening to it multiple times. Yeah, me too. I, I like this song. So this song, interestingly enough, uh, it, the, the guitar was much more interesting, and we'll get to the solo, but it was very interesting. And this song was co-written with Clint Lowry, who is the lead guitarist for Seven Dust, huh. which is a band I've never listened to, but I'm told is very good by yeah. my friends. Um, and he also does more songs later on the album that also have very good guitar, which means that he was being lead guitarist for Seven Dust was probably helping co-write a lot of these really good guitars. Right. Because right. from here on, you see a lot of a lot more good. From this song on, there's a lot more good than bad, I would say. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I was less disappointed by the end of this album than the beginning. <laughs> Yes, so this song is, is it starts off with these, like, you know... Just some chugs. Just some chugs, yeah. and then it ends with that sort of, like, gee, 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 high yeah. pick thing. But, but then when it goes to the verse riff, it's actually, like... This low down, this sort of, like... Yeah, and then there's, like, a sweet, like, tom groove on the drums. Like, it's actually yeah. got groove for once in this whole album. Um. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, it's got that low down Tommy drums you were saying, and that really twangy, sort of, like, almost bluesy guitar. Yeah. So it's got like the the riff 
you know, underneath it's like a rumbly. Sort yeah, of this, like, this, it's really got this sort of like creep and low feeling. Yeah, and I it's, really it's got it. some tension, and it's just it's a solid, solid good verse. Solid good <laughs> verse. Shush. But then, then it goes to the chorus, which is the intro riff again. Mm-hmm. It's that sort of. Yeah. Well, that, I think the chorus is good. I think. No, it's, it's it's excellent, and the fact that they reuse the intro riff, I don't mind at mm-hmm. all. Except for the problem is that we, they do the chug 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 high pitch g g g g g g and this is like the the tenth time we've seen it in this album mm-hmm. and you know it's just the fact that that's the intro riff and the chorus riff it's kind of like oh okay yeah it's, uh, i can see that but at least mm-hmm. like when you add in like all the other parts you know with the vocals and everything like it's got some it just it's got a little more time. it's got a little more intensity than the uh, choruses of other songs in this album um definitely i like it the yeah, absolutely. And then speaking of intensity, the bridge uh, energizes it up some more. Yeah. With some very there's like, actually, a, and then there's actually real guitar. Yes, solo. this is the first time I we was s- like, "Wow, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that." Yay. Yeah, not an ironic slow jam. So this has got some like. Yeah. Wah, it's got trim picking and wah and yeah, chord I, stuff, and it's. It, my only problem with the solo is that it should have been louder and longer. That's every solo on the album. Absolutely. <laughs> Just every guitar solo ever. Every, every, <laughs> well, every lead guitar part on this album... Needed to be louder. Needed to be much louder than it was, because they focused on the vocals hardcore. Yeah. Which is not bad. Like like I said before, like that's one, their biggest strength, I think. But like, th- like they've definitely always been a vocals and drums focused band, mm-hmm. whereas the like guitars tend to be not so important. But then... They need to realize that when you do have a guitar solo, it needs to be loud. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, when you got Clint Lowry and the solo is just, it's just great, I assume th- this makes me want to listen to Seven Dust. You know, mm-hmm. this song of this set makes me go, oh, maybe we should be listening to Seven Dust instead of this song, this album by Godsmack. Um, but yeah, um, there's group chanting again in the last chorus of this mm-hmm. one because they were like, it worked before, it'll work again. Yeah, why not? And this song, it's, it's not, it's, it's just, it's just a rocking good time. This yeah. is just a rollicking good song. Yeah. And I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, me too. I, good song. Okay. <laughs> the I next say. song is Say My Name. <laughs> say My Name. Did it make you want to say its name? <laughs> So meta. That's so meta, bro. This song is awesome and comes out of absolutely nowhere. Yeah, it, like so. This riff is like the best riff of the album because it's actually a riff and it's got some like bends in it. It's it's this awesome sort of. Uh, that was a very that wasn't in the right key there at all, but it's all right. Um, uh, but it was super awesome. It's yeah. this sweet bluesy bend intro riff that that develops into the verse riff. Yeah, well, and then like before the intro ends though, there's this lead. Yeah, is it a like, lead or is it long enough to technically cool. be counted as a solo? I think it still counts as a lead. It's so awesome. It's this like clap. This is hard. This is hard rock. Yeah. This is like you're like yeah. This is some atomic beeswax. This is some. Uh, not as not not quite as awesome as that, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's just it's it's skillful, it's interesting, it gets it gets the fire going in you. The hard mm-hmm. rock is supposed to get going in you, unlike some of these other songs where they really sort of uh, yeah, like this song has warmth to it. What like whereas like I said previously, and I think about other songs that felt very cold and generic. This song actually has got some like a human touch. Yeah, the, the vocals are much more sort of like Argh, what I was gonna say rough. about the vocals is that like this song like if you like how the vocals in previous Godsmack albums sounded. I think this song is the most similar to their previous work Much in more. terms of vocals. A lot um, more anger, a lot more gruffness, a lot less echoey, like he, <laughs> delay, reverb. Yeah, it sounded like he actually, like, wanted to sing it. Oh, snap. As opposed to... <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, the, the... Singing is aggressive and good, and, like, the riffs are good. Yeah, no, see, got, so... Well, and, but this is and this is the first time where I was like, man, th- th- this is the one song. Once again, this song is, stands out so weird because in this song the leads are loud, mm-hmm. and you can tell because the lead, unlike uh, the previous song where I mentioned, yeah, unlike someday, this song has a lead under the co- under the chorus going, and then it goes up an octave and everything, and I'm like I can hear that, yeah. and that's cool, and that's interesting, and the guitarist I can tell is doing something, and he sounds yeah. like he's having yeah, a good time. Yeah, and then it can, that like lead business continues after the chorus. Yeah, and there's like, another. Like, like, I was like, whoa, there was a lead before the first verse, and now there's another lead after the chorus, and then there's also, yeah, it's great. Yeah, the, I would say the one thing that makes, like, this song is brilliant, and then it goes weird. Yeah, the so. bridge is, like, 
if the bridge starts out good, like, because it, like, pans to one side and, like, pans to the other, and it's like, okay, that's cool. And then it just kind of gets eh. It is, it's odd. It's this sort of Godsmack rap. I, I can't just descri- guess. I can't Where he's just kind of, like, talk singing. Really fast. Something yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers would do, except if they were Godsmack. What? <laughs> it's just, it's just very odd. It sounds unlike anything I've... Yeah. Like, granted, I haven't... I've, I've only ever listened to the original Godsmack albums in passing. I don't know them as well as, say, you do or other people. But it's just, it's this weird groovy rap thing, and it just makes no sense yeah, to me. Yeah, this bridge was a little weird. Um, but, but I feel like it doesn't detract from the rest of the song being totally awesome. Yeah, well, and then the the bridge, like, comes back up in the last chorus, and then the little outro bit where it's just like a y- yeah, like a really intense yeah, <laughs> which I appreciate so much, because I'm like, this is straight out of, like, their first album, you know? That's the sound... That, that he sounded like, and I'm like, yes. Are you like, yeah? I am like, yeah. Well, then you just gotta let it out. Uh, let it out. Do you want to let it out of this album? Uh, I don't really have any opinions on what it does on this album. Yeah, it's like a solidly it's solid song. Once again, just like that that previous song that we mentioned, it just it functions, it works. It's a, a, yeah. every part of me. It just it just exists. I say it, it was better than every part of me. I'd say. I don't agree. Um, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> um, the, what I like about it is the verse vocal melody. It's very, very much in their, uh, their previous style, like with the. Uh, and just whatever about their melodies that that make them a Godsmack <laughs> melody, whatever that is, like yeah da 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 yeah da 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 da. So the song it starts off with these very sort of dry chugs and a, like a little dun, 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 lead, and then it slowly adds parts layer by layer until it's finally the verse, mm-hmm. and then it has that vocal, which is interesting. I wouldn't say the rest of it's very interesting. Yeah. And then the chorus is, I don't like. The second half. So it starts off with this really sort of like, let it out, let it go. It's, it gets like, yeah, I'm going to like wreck your shop. And then it's like, oh, no, now we're gentle. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. I no, what I was thinking throughout the song is I'm like, I bet an acoustic version of the song would sound really good. Yes, I agree with you on that. That's not a problem. Is it, it's, it's too weak for the strong parts, and it's too strong for the weak parts yeah. of this. Yeah, like an acoustic, like a stripped down, like just an acoustic guitar and him singing, like would sound really good, I think. Yes, and, and some like bongos. <laughs> Which, well, I mean, it wouldn't be Godsmack. <laughs> that's my problem. Is I don't know if, if there are any bongos on this album, so therefore I can't like it. No, but um, and then the the bridge is these hella sort of, simple. It's just these. It's just monotones. Sort of, it's one and note, then his and voice, then just a kick drum, and then his like, voice is being like blah, 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 blah. It's just it's all super monotone, and for me, it's mega boring. Yeah, I wrote the exact same thing that the the bridge is really boring, and oh, we'll see. And then after it comes up, it just ends like it, it, it ends. It's oh, it's over. Yeah. It ends like a, like on a, just chord done. And I'm like, oh, there's just there's just not much to this song. Yeah, it's not bad. It's it's not bad, but I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that. But that's just me. Like it's perfectly functional on the album. It just works. See, on that's the, the thing. Album. Like I'm like I can like bop my head to it. Like it's not bad. I won't turn it off. I guess. Yeah. It's just I I guess what what really comes from is having just heard say my name. Then yeah. going to this, I'm just like ah oh, ah oh, ah. Oh. That's hard to keep up that pace. Oh, yes. that's true. I mean, there, there. The thing is, there are plenty of albums out there that are good from start to finish, as you'll know, listening yeah. to our top ten favorite albums video last week. Yeah. Last, not last week, yeah, last, month, last month. Whatever. Um, yeah, but this, yeah, song is just meh. yeah. It, it's it's definitely the calm between the uh, in the eye of the storm of the two songs around it. Eye of the storm. Um, did this song bring a storm upon your brain <laughs> of music? No, I don't know. <laughs> no. Okay. So, so this also was written again with uh, Lowry from uh, Seven Dust. Okay. And you can tell the influence that he had on it because the There's guitar no riffs notes. are interesting. Yeah. This this is one of the most like interesting riffs. I, I don't know if like I would use the word best, but one of the most <laughs> interesting. Riffs. Yeah. It's really it, it moves a it's lot. Got some notes. Yeah. It, it moves a lot, but it's still it's still heavy. Oh, definitely. And it's this sweet, yeah. bouncy, jouncy intro riff thing that's really good. I, I really yeah, like it. Yeah, and I'm it. so glad that they didn't just leave that riff in the intro. Like, it, it's the chorus riff. No, it's the verse riff also. I'm sorry. Um, 
And so I'm like, it's it's good to see that they saw that they had a good riff, and we're like, let's use it as much as we can. I mean, yeah, when you have someone from another band write you a riff, which I imagine he did for this, you 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 you, you ride that riff to death. Yeah. And uh, it, it's I would swear, like, because it, it has the, it has the very basic Lars beat again. Yes. Yeah. It's just a, such like such boring drums in this song. Yes, and it reminded me thoroughly of. So no, let me take a moment and break the ice. Yeah. Your intentions are unknown. It reminded me a lot of that during this song because of those large drums and just the very sort of that low down, fast moving sort of riff. It, mm-hmm. just, it, it, it has a very modern feel. It mm-hmm. doesn't feel quite like early Godsmack, but that's that's fine. Um, the problem is, like I said, the drums in the in the verse and chorus they're just they're boring yeah, and the boring. pre-chorus just dies. There's just nothing in it. It's like empty and it takes all the energy out of it before it goes into the once again, I, 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 the intro riff and the verse riff is so good that when this chorus is just like, okay. Yeah, the chorus is kind of bland. It's just, it just, it's, it's just another one of these choruses where it's a chord progression and he sings a, yeah. not too aggressive a melody on it. Yeah, but the, and the verse is way more interesting. Um, like, during the chorus, I'm like, can we get back to the verse? Yeah, the, you should <laughs> never, ever say that. Dave Grohl once said, don't bore us, get to the chorus. It's not yeah. the other way around. But that's great. You know, if... Yeah. The fact is, all the songs should interest you, but if there's a part you really like, that's the thing. Is I really yeah. liked that that intro and that verse. And speaking really liking a part, the guitar solo. Yes, I, I is once bomb. again, I once again wonder if this was Lowry. I imagine it must have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's got this like sassy, bendy, wah biz to it, and it's it gets like, a little like pentatonic jamming going on. Yeah, part of it's it. like actually a pretty decent solo. Yeah, it's 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 the soul except for the chorus. Like, this is everything I wanted. From yeah. this album, I guess. I, like, yeah. And about the guitar solo specifically, like, my only complaint is that it needed to be louder. Um, yeah. And once it again, needed some more, like, effects. Like, some more... I felt like it could have used more distortion. It was it was just very and, straightforward. Yeah. Well, see, my problem is, I feel like... Or like, a pinch or something. Once again, the only, <laughs> the only lead that was really interesting and dynamic and felt really cool was the ones in Say My Name. I really mm-hmm. felt all the rest of the leads on this album were just... They were kind of weak. And yeah. I didn't like them. And I, and I wonder if maybe Lowry had to record in a different studio than the rest of them. And maybe that's why it sounds different yeah, or something. Know. Yeah. But the, and the thing is like this in comparison to the rest of this album, I'm like, wow, it's a great solo. But then if I like take it out of context and compare it to other solos that exist, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's, that, that's the thing is that's why they wanted to remove themselves from the heavy metal sort of genre. But then you think of like, <laughs> so the they don't have to compete with the guitar solo. <laughs> well, then you think, well, then you think of like said the atomic, like I mentioned earlier, their their guitar work is insane and they're mm. hard rock and it's just crazy. Yeah. Speaking you of you can cra- be metal without good solos and you can be hard rock with really good solos. You know, it's whatever you want. Yeah. Well, speaking of good and hard rock, what did you think of this album? Um, I was really disappointed. Altogether? Yeah. <laughs> like I got less disappointed over time. Like the first three songs, I was like, "Oh, fucking yes. God, save me!" The se- um, God smack save you. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, uh, the second half of this album is significantly better than the first oh, yeah, half, definitely. I would say. Yeah, but like when like when we're like halfway through, I'm like, I'm so sad. I love God's back. Well, so like <laughs> I think Bulletproof, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when it came out, la- was number two on mainstream rock yeah. charts. I think. Like, um, sure. And like I said, it reminded me so. I could like like I could like that song if it was by a different band. Like like I said, that, I like just said have that. certain ex- I had certain expectations f- for a new Godsmack album. Yeah, like I said, that's why I said but. this reminds me so much of what, what I think of when, when I think of, like, Skillet. Like, you know, I feel like a monster, and then they come up with Earthquake, Tidal yeah. Wave. That's exactly what this is yeah. with Godsmack. And I'm like, that change because of modern production techniques of the switch to a more, mm-hmm. like, maybe a me- more metalcore style or something, it's very different. And I feel like, see, they, they went with hard rock, but with, with Eric Ron, and I, granted, I don't know a lot about Eric Ron. I just know, like I said, New Year's Day, Motionless and White, Attila, Panic of Disco, mm-hmm. They're not bands that suck. They're, um, well, no. they're not. Those aren't hard rock <laughs> yeah, bands. Okay. So it seems odd that bands I don't like. Yeah, it seems <laughs> odd that when going in a hard rock direction, even with that. Mm-hmm. So that just seemed a little strange to me. Uh, so what would you rate this album on a scale of ten? Four and a half. I'd I'd give it at least a five because if you're not if you don't know Godsmack, this is actually That's a pretty true. decent introduction. That, that is true. Right? Like like I wish that this was my first Godsmack album. Then I could go back and listen to all the others and be like, wow, it just gets better from here. Um, That's the thing is this. And you can tell, you can tell. I don't know if you can tell. That's what he wants because he said he said I believe in a quote that he said he wanted to branch out or spread his wings. That's what he said. Um, 
And you can tell that this is produced much more from a black album standpoint. This is what will get oh, more yeah, of the yeah. populace into yeah. your music. That's I can see that. And I don't know if that's what he wanted or if that's just how it worked out, but it feels that way to me. So I would give... This- the thing is, like, it's like Godsmack's already a really popular band. They don't need to, like, necessarily go after more people. I, I, don't, I don't know enough about them to say that. But, uh... But all that's, I'm just saying that's the way this felt. This felt much more modern. The production techniques yeah. were very modern. Lots of, like I said, lots of effects, lots they of reverbs and delays. They progressed from being stuck in the 90s to being stuck in the mid-2000s. Woo! What a time <laughs> to be alive. No. Now, now, now I say all that. I am a fan of God's Back. <laughs> yeah, like, I, legit, I have their whole discography, and I love it all. This album's all right. So um, speaking of which, are you going to keep this album on your iPod? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Just because I have the rest of it and I don't want... Like, like, I might skip some of the songs, but there are definitely some songs I liked on this album. Yeah, which, and guess, definitely on the third or fourth listen through, a lot of them are catchy in ways that I'm like, oh, that's the, that's catchy in a pop music way. Yeah. Not necessarily in a... Metal way. Metal way. Which said, he wanted metal to move... Metal or rock. He wanted to move yeah. away from, from metal, so... And he has successfully done so, I think. Especially with, what was it called? Under Your Scars. Yeah. Anyway. So, speaking of Under Your Scars, let's talk about... Uh, bottom three songs. Okay. Um, from the th- third worst to the most worst. Yes. The third worst, Bulletproof. Now, I say that as a third worst as Godsmack. As, you know? as you say that as a Godsmack fan, not necessarily as a how good it is on this yes. album fan. Like, if I heard that song from another band, I might be like, oh, yeah, that's like some, some good pop rock, pop hard rock. I mean, yeah, it's got um, some good stuff in it. And so, yeah, it's like an all right song. It just. It was disappointing to me. Um, and then my n- next worst was Unforgettable. <laughs> because it was um, so gosh darn forgettable or because of the children choir? Because uh, of the millennial woes, the children choir, the bland ass chorus, like the discount Lincoln Park intro. Like it's just, just a lot of not great things mm-hmm. in that song. Um, and then my most worst, I'm sure you can guess, is uh, <laughs> Under Your Scars. What? Because it has no place on this album at all or in Godsmack's discography at all um like it's really like nothing they've ever done and um like in a bad way and it's really generic and like the lyrics are bad and like the only redeeming thing is the guitar solo yes but that's a great it does not redeem it enough in my book once again I we'll get to in a minute but I think that that puts it in the almost self-parodying zone yeah so it's just that I could just delete that off the album and been happy. Yeah. Um, so, so my bottom three, my worst, my third, third, wor- the least worst of the three, uh, was someday. Cause it was just too long at four minutes, 44 seconds. Uh, and for being that long the, for the verse riff and the intro ripping, it was really like boring and I just not into it. The lead under the chorus, the chorus was just, you know, it was just chordals, just straightforward advancing progression, but there was a lead, but it was mixed so quietly that that really disappointed me. And then the bridge, like I said, the inner Sandman drums with the weird reverb delay. I just, it, it just, it wasn't, I didn't like it very much. It just wasn't me. And I know you won't agree with this one, but my, my second worst was let it out. Really? It's just, it was so generic and boring with that dry sort of and then the parts just I, I will admit I like the parts slowly growing together under the verse like that was cool but then the chorus just having this really simple chord progression and really basic melody and the bridge being really monotone with its vocal and its mm. its chugs and everything and its drums just being the kicks it's just it was just so generic and boring that I was just like I wish that, I wish it was not on the album instead of just being there and filling yeah. up space. It felt like filler to me. And then maybe that's just me, but I don't know. And my first worst, you know, it's it's hard to say. And once again, I, I, I know you especially hate this song, but I love this song, and that's why voting it the worst is so painful. Under Your Scars is the worst song on this album. It, and that's the problem is because it's so aggressively generic, so ballad put through a machine... That when it when you hear an actually good slow jammy soulful solo, it enters the realm of oh are they making fun of themselves? Is this a joke territory? Yeah, because it's just so like oh that has soul, but the rest of it is the exact opposite of having a soul. It's the most robotic you could be. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's super weird and it just makes no sense to me. But it was it is glorious and I wouldn't be shocked if anyone out there loved it too because I know I did. 
So. So then leading to your best? My, your my top three? My top, I mean, I'm already talking, so I'll just go. <laughs> my third best, I feel like our top three will probably be very same. similar, if not yeah. the same. Um, so my third best is Take It to the Edge. Uh, they'll, they'll be the same songs. They won't be in the same order because I know we'll have different opinions on this. And that's because its intro has those heavy chugs. It's like got that, you know, it's like chun, 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 the two thousand chugs with mm-hmm. the high picks, and it's just, it's just, it's just that two thousand new metal. It's got that new metal feel, and I really like it. And I, I don't know. It just the only thing that made it weird was it was that bridge that felt kind of like mm-hmm. interestingly. What's the word I'm looking for? Just a strange melody. Yeah, it was so strange, but I liked it. The fact that they had the call and response at the end was really cool. And anyway, that just makes it my third best. My second best, um, oh, my second or third best, first best are all on the same page. My second best was Just One Time, which, like I said, was co-written with uh, Lowry of Seven Dust, the mm-hmm. guitarist. And it's because it has, like I said, that cool, low-down, sort of bluesy sort of riff with the toms, like... Mm-hmm. Like really low down, and then having that the the the, the you know the, the chorus riff was the intro riff. It was very much sort of the it was very like new metally and awesome. And the solo was great with the trim picking and the wah the cordage all oh, good. I liked it a lot. And my first best is is, is probably an obvious pick for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's anyone who's watched this channel knows that I like really bluesy stuff. They know that I like that hard rocky sort of sound. And so my number one is Say My Name, because those sweet, bendy intro and verse riffs, that very much more aggressive vocal, uh, that sweet, you know, those, those leads, those hard rock leads that are so awesome. Mm-hmm. I loved those. They were just great. And the only part I didn't like about it was the bridge, that weird groovy rap thing, because it just, it wasn't what I wanted at yeah. all. And yeah. you? And uh, so I have some in common with you in the thing. Uh, my third best, actually, though, was Eye of the Storm. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Because um, I just really like that riff a lot. Yeah, once again, um, featuring Seven Dust. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, that's more or less. the. Oh, yeah, the riff and the solo were both really yeah, good. Yeah, both fantastic. So that's why that's my third favorite. And then I, like, changed my mind about my, my top two were pretty close. Um, and I actually, upon listening to it, like, the third time through, I, like, changed my mind about which one I like more. So my second best favorite is Just One Time. Um. Okay. For the, basically the same reasons. Like, I love the verse of that song. It's got such a great, like, interplay between the guitars and the drums. Like, I think they're rhythmically, like, doing something interesting for once. Mm -hmm. Um, and, yeah, and, like, the chorus actually steps it up properly, and, um, it just... It made me actually bang my head a little bit, unlike yeah. the previous songs on the album. And had a solo is great song. And then, but closely, I put it in second to say my name because say my name just felt more human. And felt, it felt more like well, it felt more in line with their stated goals too. Yeah, make a hard rock album. That's yeah. it. Say my name is the hard is the hard rock. Yeah, and the vocals felt the most authentic, and uh, like he's actually putting soul into it. Mm-hmm. Um, like a lot of a lot, a lot of the vocals on this album to me felt a little like bored. Yeah, just um, layered. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the vocals in this song were just like sounded like he's actually really into singing it, which I love. Yeah, so. I, everyone sounded like they were really into playing "Say My Name." It's just everything yeah. was better on it. The drums are better, the guitars are better, everything was better. "Say My Name" really. Yeah. Top top That's track w- would have made that the single if it weren't for the weird rap part. I think. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the weird rap part. You'll just have to listen to it. It's really strange. So, would you recommend this album to anyone else? Um, sure, I guess. Um, if you're already a Godsmack fan, I would say don't have high hopes. Um, but if you're just a, I don't know, if you generally like rock music that they play on the radio, sure, listen to it. Oh, yeah, like you're so special for liking stuff they don't play on the radio. Uh, I'm not, uh, whatever, man. <laughs> um, All would right. you? Would I recommend this to anyone else? Not really, no. It's just, it switches around what genres it is a lot. It feels kind of unfocused to me. The songs I like... Don't it make, feels kind of computer generated. Yeah, the songs I like, don't I don't like them enough. Like I said, I won't be keeping this on my iPod. Yeah. Uh, they don't, I don't like them enough to recommend them, so in the end, probably not. Yeah. All in all, this album is a bit of a wash for me. Will it make me not want to listen to Godsmack's next next album? No, like I will listen to Godsmack's next album because I like their previous stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. Like they've already like for me, they've already won me over enough as a fan that I'm like, I'll I'll give them this one. I'll keep listening. 
and I'll see them when they come to town. Like, I'm still a fan. <laughs> yeah, normal last question is, will this make you go back and listen to it all? But we have, so, yeah. you know. But, yeah. So, in the end, everybody's a critic, including us. Bye-bye. Ticket to the bridge. Dirty, Dirty bridge. You see the shackles, baby, I'm your slave.